Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here in the boardroom. Thank you for joining us on Zoom. Welcome to the special board meeting for Adelanto informational meeting for Adelanto Elementary School District. Today is Thursday, April the 4th, 2024. Ms. LeVay, would you please Oh, have a roll call, please. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. The time is 5.33. I'm the one running a little late. Thank you. Trustee Bentz? Pre present. Trustee Turner? Turner present. Trustee Soto? Soto present. Trustee Webster? Webster present. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench present. The quorum has been established. Moving on to section 1.04. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic and for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving along to section two, adoption of the agenda. Ms. LeVay, do we have any proposed additions, deletions, and adjustments in the order of business? Madam President, we do not. Section 2.02, .02, trustees, I need a motion to adopt the agenda. Webster, I motion to adopt. So do I, second. Ms. LeVay, please take the vote. Trustee Soto. So do I. Trustee Webster. Webster, I. Trustee Turner. Turner, I. Trustee Benz. Benz, I. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, I. Motion passed 5 0. Moving right along to section three for closed session declarations. We will be taking items 13.0. No, I'm sorry. We'll be taking items 3.02 through. 3.03 .03 into closed session. It wasn't my eyes that time. It was a typo. <laughs> okay, public comment period. This is the public comment period is administrated by state law and is the point in the meeting set aside for members of the public to share their opinions with the board. Open meeting laws do not permit the board to engage in dialogue or answer questions. Any person who wishes to address the governing board on closed session agenda items only must complete and submit an AESD speaker request form five minutes before the meeting is called to order. Public comments will only be taken on agenda items during the discussion of those items. The board values public comments and although the Board of Trustees cannot take action or discuss items not on the agenda, the Board of Trustees listen carefully and appreciate input from the public. Additionally, a public speaker can be cut off for exceeding the allotted time or for willfully causing an actual disruption to the meeting before cutting a person off or Removing someone, the board will give at least one clear warning. If you were cut off or warned last time, please consider that your warning. Individual speakers are allowed three minutes to address the board on each closed session agenda item. The board limits the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. With board consent, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public presentations depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. The president may take a poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask that additional persons speak only if they have something new to add. Moving on to section 4.02. We have anyone that is speaking for um, ADTA? 
Ms. Jennifer Rader, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by um, enumerating the AESD superintendents we've had since 2012 to, from re in reverse order. Michael Kraus, Keenan Mitchell, Amy Nguyen Hernandez, Edwin Gomez, Lily Matos de Blue, and Darren Brawley. Six superintendents in 12 years. Compare, compare that to the length of time superintendents have served in other districts. Hesperia, eight years. Oro Grande, 12. Victor Valley Unified, eight years. Silver Valley, just four superintendents in 24 years. Apple, uh, Apple Valley, I didn't have Apple Valley written in. Uh, Barstow, 15 years, just three in the last 25 years. Lucerne, seven years, and they just renewed him for four more. And there were a lot of retirements in our neighborhood districts during COVID, but even those roles have been consistent for the past four years. Trona's record, Trona's record compares to us, five supers and two interims in 13 years, but it has been devastating for morale and support for teachers gets lower each time. Our faith in our leaders is diminished. Over the past year, since making Michael Krauss our superintendent, we have seen a veritable meeting of the Mutual Admiration Society up on the dais, with everyone patting each other on the back for a job well done, and Mr. Krauss in particular being lauded for his work. His contract was extended until 2027 without his valuations or goals being complete, and now he has been MIA since the board meeting on March 5th. Where has he been, and why hasn't he been here? Despite not settling with ADTA a fair, on a fair contract this year, and despite filing a qualified budget when, in fact, we have plenty of money, we're very solvent, I, for one, welcomed the consistency of one person, someone local who had an interest in staying with us for the long haul. It is our wish to have someone who is transparent, willing to work with teachers and administrators, someone desiring to make Adelanto the district it should be, a place of consistently high quality instruction and fair treatment for all employees. Being bereft of a leader hurts all of us. This revolving door continues to spin. It took almost a year to attract new superintendents of human resources and business services. How long can we expect Dr. Albert to commute from San Clemente if this district falls apart into chaos? Can we really afford to have vacancies in critical points of leadership? The problem with having a revolving door of soups is that, is that the district as a whole cannot get solidified. Shh, shh, shh. Honey, please. Okay, all right. Each new superintendent brings different ideas for the education of the students. Sometimes this means new curriculum, changing staffing. Always, it's a disruption. Our teachers begin to disrupt. Our teachers begin to distrust administration, and we rely only on ourselves, which isn't right because our leaders are supposed to lead, and that in turn means we follow. We need to have consistent leadership that engenders respect and trust. Please, I'm sorry about this. I'm doing, I'm doing the best we could. On Tuesdays, I'm without the baby. Thursdays, I have the baby. Sorry. We need to have consistent leadership that engenders respect and trust. Finally, I'd like to leave you with information to help you strategize for our negotiations, as that was the initial agenda for your meeting tonight. Number one, 2324 has been funded with an 8.22% COLA, which translates into $6.5 million. This, by the way, in an economy that has had an average cost of living increase of over 46%. The cost of a 1% raise for all teachers is $455,000. That means that with the COLA increase, you could afford a 13% raise for teachers. At the same time, our existing budget has $25 million allocated in two categories that has not been spent this year. That looks like an incorrect budget projection at best or a planned surplus, which really raises more questions. The only reason we met the 60% threshold requirement for salaries last year was because we got the 12% increase. Most districts are encouraged to go, go above that minimum. We are projecting that we won't meet that threshold this year and moving forward without an increase. Finally, and most importantly, Atalanta students deserve highly qualified teachers in every classroom. With our current pay scale, other districts snap up the teacher candidates from the available pool. We need to increase our pay scale just to stay competitive. 
We had seven non-reelects this year, which is kind of a lot compared to other districts, which had one to two on average. That represents a loss to our district, pouring resources and training into teachers that we don't wish to retain. We need to be able to compete at the job, pardon me, compete at the job fairs. Why would a new teacher stay working here when they could drive five miles east and get paid $5,000 to $10,000 more with smaller classes to boot? Terrific teachers may sign on with us to get their clear credential and experience, and then they scoot over to a neighboring district for higher pay, leaving us with a vacancy to be filled with another brand new inexperienced teacher. As a result of our lowest pay scale, we have fewer high, highly qualified teachers from which to choose. We need to attract and retain highly qualified teachers, and it simply won't happen with our current pay scale. New teachers are looking at the bottom line of salary. Here is your chance to rectify things. Do the right thing by our students by spending today's money on today's students. Fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Krause, do we have anyone available for um, CSEA? Yes, Madam President, we'd like to call Ms. Diane Lynn to the podium this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, LaFrench, trustees, Mr. Krause on Zoom and cabinet, ADTA, CSCA, and all others on Zoom and everyone else present. Um, I'd like to start off by saying, uh, we've all heard on the news, that our food service workers started making $20 an hour. Okay. Our food service one, starting wage, is 1676. Our food service twos, which have more responsibility, are starting off at 1759. Why should our food service workers stay here? Also, I agree with everything that ATA, ADTA has just said as far as CSCA. Uh, we are standing behind them and also agree with what they've been saying. Uh, we did receive the budget. And um, unbeknownst to a lot of you, we did send it to our financial people at CSCA, also downtown. And the same things that ADTA discovered, so did CSCA. What we don't understand and will never understand is why would we transfer $21 million of unrestricted funds to restricted funds? Yes. Our COLA was approved at the beginning of the school year, and what should be for this school year, a COLA of 8.22. And all of us standing are offered zero. Also, our insurance. Um, I got a phone call um, for our open enrollment, and I was, didn't know, I thought we were bidding out we couldn't get bids because we previously have been bidding and I guess everybody out there does not want to give us anything. Our insurance for Kaiser and for Aetna is going 20% higher. So we're all going to be getting a decrease in salaries for this year. We don't understand it. We have been loyal to AESD. Some of us, me included, have over 25 years here So I'm hoping that you reconsider. I'm hoping that our trustees will really look into that budget and see why and where this money is going. $21 million for this school year. So please be diligent and please do your homework, okay? All of us, we trust in you and we're all feeling really disappointed, frustrated, overworked, we don't want to feel that way, okay? We want to be proud. We want to be able to say, we work for AESD, and guess what they granted us? We don't want to say nothing. Thank you for allowing me to speak. 
Thank you. Mr. Krauss, do we have any audience members? Yes, Madam President, we'd like to call Karina Rodriguez to the podium at this time. Thank you. Okay, so my daughter goes to George and we are we see a lot of familiar faces here. And one of the things is that I've been a nurse for some time. And when you give um, your staff the tools that they need in order to carry the day-to-day -day operations that go through, the staff is happy to come to work. Your ch our children benefit from it. Not only that, they are not just teaching, you know, they're teaching the children, they're teaching the baker's children, they're teaching the mechanics, they're teaching a community so that we can keep our kids focused with um, the great advantages that George has, that they are an arts and performing arts school, bringing all those tools into that. Um, another thing is that I have seen, because my the teacher is Ms. Thomas, and I don't see any other professional with her. I have gone into the classroom and she has 24 kids. In the beginning, there was two special ed kids. And it's just like, why are you guys not recognizing, and I don't mean you guys, I mean the whole team, recognizing that these children are there. And yes, they do deserve the, the education, just as my daughter, but if you guys are able to recognize these children before they are put into this class where these children have not been in a classroom setting before and they create chaos within that, not only that, you have one teacher for 24 students, which two, or I don't know if there's more, um, do need that, that professional care. Who's there? to um, help out with the flow. There's kids who are very advanced, there's kids who are in the middle, and there's kids who maybe parents are not taking the time to help out. So what are they gonna do if this child is having outbursts? My daughter sometimes goes home and she's thinking about her teacher because there's this specific child in her class that throws tantrums often often to the fact that she's thinking, well, she was yelling and she was being very disruptive. Just as this child, this special child needs that uh, special care, well, it's creating a disruption within the class and it's take, it, and they're not learning because now there's chaos. So if they're not receiving it at home, now they're receiving it here. If they get it at home, now they're getting it at class too. So I would just like for you guys, if you guys can really think about bringing professionals um, just the assistance back into the class. And if we can help our teachers, because I really like seeing the same staff over and over. And I know that Ms. Daisy knows my daughter. And when my, my daughter does something and she sees me outside, she tells me. And I know that Ms. Padilla, she translates beautifully for a lot of people. And I know that she, I don't know her name, but I know she waves every single morning and she waits for my daughter. So if we give these, uh, you know, the staff, what they deserve, they will stay and they create, they develop this beautiful love for the community that they work with. But if you don't give them the raises that they need, it's just like people are just going to go and you're just there for the money at the end of the day. You know, and we don't want that. We want to create, we want to have teachers who are happy who are happy to come to work and work with our children. And another thing that I have seen in my daughter's classes, not, not every parent works with their child. So everything is really on them. So if they don't have assistance, you have a teacher who's teaching the advanced, the ones in the middle and the ones that are like struggling. And we need, we need to bring back that money into the schools, into their children and into our staff. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cross, is there anyone in Zoom land? Uh, we actually have one more in person, Ms. Lauren Benson, and then one on Zoom after Ms. Benson. Yes, Madam President. We'd like to welcome Ms. Benson to the podium at this time. Good evening, everybody. 
I'm sure just like me, you'd probably rather be anywhere else right now spending your time and you probably have lots of other things to do, but we have to keep coming back to the same issues over and over and over. Um, you know, I started out here 18 years ago and I didn't realize, you know, where I was, what was going on. I had never heard of this place before. Um, and you come and you think, okay, I'm an up upcoming new teacher. I'm excited. I don't care. I'll do a job and I'll do it anywhere. And then there's a recession or a housing, housing crash and you're years into your new job. And so you just wonder how long you'll be here. Some years pass and now you have a little bit of security. So you hold on a little longer and make it through some tough times, some rifts, some layoffs. And then you've been here and survived the hard times. So you think, okay, it looks like things are getting better. You've built a family and a community around you. You get close with your colleagues and your students and families. The economy gets better, but now you've got some years under your belt and you're not sure that it's financially responsible to go somewhere else. You also see the difference you're making and think, hey, these kids deserve good teachers too. You see your colleagues come and go. I believe I was in a group of 137 teachers that were hired and there's about 30 of us left. Most have gone to be uh, to other districts where they have been paid better, better medical benefits, better insurance, become education consultants. Some are able to leave and take that pay cut because they have backup. Um, so you stay because it's practical. You stay because you love your colleagues. You stay because you love your families. Um, I'll tell you the reasons that don't help you stay. You don't stay because of your admin, not anymore. <laughs> Um, you don't stay because of your superintendent or assistant superintendents. I've been through 12. You don't stay because of your school board. No offense. You don't stay because you feel valued. You know you're going to have to fight every single year for a pay increase you deserve and the health benefits that should be never be in question. Most of the time you're thinking, what if I take the leap? It's always in the back of your mind. Most of us don't feel supported or that we get what we need to be truly happy and successful. We're always wondering, when will that happen? We've experienced some of it in the past and we remember what it feels like. We count our best blessings and are grateful that we have great partners to lean on, that we've built our school family that keep us sane. We have parents that support us and we take those things and try to make it enough. It's not enough. You get offers and past colleagues or admin trying to coax you away. And it really sounds good. I live in Ukaipa and it's a far commute, so it really sounds wonderful. Um, and so you hesitate, but then you think after all this time, this is my home, these are my people. Maybe we'll finally get a cabinet that's efficient. Maybe we'll get a superintendent that does what they say and mean what they say and actually gets the time to implement it. Then eventually there's the all too often and familiar letdown, the roller coaster we're constantly on. We still manage to do our jobs and do them well. That right there is enough to pay us what we deserve. In the end, the why becomes less and less clear. And then you start to think about the why not. And sadly, those are the things that you're telling our new teachers. Why not stay here? And I feel horrible when I speak to interns and I speak to other people and I say, I didn't know as a teacher that you have about five years to decide if this is your home. And once that time is over, you have no more time. So I tell them to think very hard and make sure that not only they can handle it here with our troubled population, our troubled office and that they can handle it mentally and physically because it's not for the weak and there are much, much other places to be. I have many family in education and in other districts and this worried about their health care and whether or not they're going to get an increase that they can feel, not just one or two percent to get by, is really disheartening. So I hope we can make the changes that we need and that we're not back up here in a year from now as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kraus. Yes, Madam President, we do have, that concludes in person, but we have Ms. Cynthia Rodriguez who's online and uh, if she could be asked to unmute, uh, she is our only speaker for online this evening, Madam President. Hey, thank you. Ask him to unmute un un now. Hello, good evening. Do any of the board members have any children who are enrolled in the Adelanto School District? If so, do you value your child's teacher? My name is Cynthia Rodriguez. My son attends Gus Franklin Elementary uh, School, and I do value his teacher, and I appreciate her so much. When my son entered the fourth grade, he struggled with reading and writing. 
When his confidence was low and he struggled to keep up with this work, Miss Munoz, Miss Lisa Munoz was there to help him. She never gave up on him. She taught him how to be a better writer, how to become a better reader. Now my son, along with the whole class, has passed their AR goal. That right there is dedication. Dedication to my son, not only to my son, but to all of her students. I asked for the district to be transparent and inform parents of the reason why you guys have reached impasse. What are the reasons that negotiation discussions have been exhausted? Has the district been doing fair negotiation? What has the district offered the teachers? As a parent and as a community member, I would like to ask for you guys to be transparent and to appreciate and not devalue their student achievement. I ask the district to be honest during mediation and the fact-finding process. Thank you. Madam Thank President, you. I'm sorry. Madam President, that concludes our speakers for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Moving on to uh, section five, recess to closed session. Trustees, I need a motion to recess to closed session. A motion that we go to closed session. Trustee Turner, I second. Ms. LeVay, please take the vote. Trustee Soto. Soto, aye. Trustee Webster. Webster, aye. Trustee Turner. Turner, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye, and the time is 5.59. The time is now 9.27, reconvening for open session, call to order, roll call. Trustee Soto. Soto here. Trustee Webster. Webster present. Trustee Turner. Turner present. Trustee Benz. Benz pre present. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench present. Quorum has been established. Moving on to uh, section seven adjournment. Webster, I motion to adjourn. Okay, you have to report actions taken in closed session. There were no actions taken in closed session. No reportable actions. You reported to staff. Yeah. You gave Excuse the staff direction. Yeah, that's so, all you said. We gave staff direction. I would like to recall what I said the first time. During closed session, we gave staff direction. Moving on to section seven, adjournment. Was I, that crystal clear? Yes. Yes. I have a, a motion from Trustee Webster. I need a second. Benz, I sec second. I'll take the vote. Trustee Soto. Soto, aye. Trustee Webster. Webster, aye. Trustee Turner. Turner, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Motion pass. Um, Everyone drive home safe. Thank you. Madam Have President, the time is 928. 928. Thank you.